Good afternoon, everybody. Uneducated economist here. So I wanted to talk a little bit about this article I was reading, um, talking about Japan and the lack of population growth and what the what the government plans on doing in order to combat the lack of fertility that is happening within Japan. Uh, this is growing to what they refer to, I believe, as a crisis situation with the social functions of society over there due to the fact that they do not have a replenishing population growth. Basically, their their population is depleting and not, and not advancing, not growing. Anyhow, what the government has suggested on doing is adding child care to part of the social safety nets, I guess, is the easiest way to explain it. So basically, there's going to be a welfare program to provide child service care. And now I think about this, this is a luxury. Okay? And this is a luxury that is the reasoning why they do not have a population growth occurring is because they live in luxury. It's the high standard of living that is creating this situation. It's something that we have just recently gone over in a video, um, and I'll leave a link down to, for that down in the description for that video. But ultimately, this is what it goes down as, is that if you have a high standard of living, then the idea of bringing children into that high standard of living is very difficult as children are expensive and it depletes your standard of living and it lowers it. Most people do not want to lower their standard of living. Now, if in, even if it doesn't lower the standard of living, Raising children into an environment that is going to be either more difficult for them to have a better life than you, or it's probably not likely that they're even going to have the life that you have, then you're not going to bring them into that world. Like, well, the people will bring them into the world, don't get me wrong, but the decision that the people will make on their own, right, as far as starting families, start from a man having the ability to believe that he will be able to provide a life that is better for him and his family than the life that he is currently existing, or at least be able to have that life, maintain that life. But if it's any way that they think that they are going to be depleted or that it's somehow going to be a struggle to maintain that standard of living, then most likely they will not start a family and they will just maintain their standard of living and be comfortable with that and this is something that you can see it's not like it's not even something that's really up to debate it's just like just look at all the western societies that have a high standard of living everything that led them to the high standard of living gave them room to have all kinds of family and big families think about from the depression to like the 60s here in the united states family formations grew like crazy during that time because during that time, the standard of living kept increasing and the ability to provide a life that was either better than the one you had or one for your children that was better than the one you had was much more available during that that time than it is now when you have multiple people having to work to maintain that household or that standard of living. I mean, think back in the day, a man used to be able to work and provide and buy a house and cars and, you know, retire and do all this stuff off of just one income. This is what, you know, America used to look like. Now you need two incomes just to even, you know, maintain a household, let alone trying to raise kids. And so the higher the standard of living goes, the more difficult it becomes to raise children. Now, what I found interesting is that when you have government stepping in to say, hey, we're going to try and help out with the high standard of living that you have by providing you this luxury, which I know a lot of people were like, yeah, luxury, whatever. No, that's a luxury. Somebody watching your kids for you is a luxury. If you can't pay for it or don't pay for it, it's a, it's a government welfare. And now when you have government welfare in a state of mass luxuries like we have here in the United States, you have separation between the rich and the poor. And that makes it ever more difficult for the poor to achieve that standard of living. It's, all this stuff seems very backwards to think about, but it's, it's, it's really, you have to think, this is going to be very much like the Cobra effect. Okay, um, that's probably what I should title this video, is the Cobra effect. Um, Okay, 
the Cobra Effect, if you've never heard of this, there was some, I don't know if it was a particular city or some cities in India that had a problem with, with snakes, like overrunning the city. They were all over the place. And so they were trying to figure out what it is that they could do about all these dang snakes that were just terrorizing all the people in the city. And so they came up with the idea of raising a bounty and getting people to catch the snakes and the government would pay them like, a, you know, 50 cents or whatever it was for these, for these snakes. And it worked out really well. People went out there and started catching these snakes and turning them in for the bounty. And people just kept turning in snakes and turning in more snakes and turning in snakes and turning in snakes. And the government realized, oh man, people are breeding these snakes. Right? So we can't really continue on with this program. I mean, it's like a useless program. They're not catching snakes. They're breeding snakes and selling them to us. And there's no point to this. Okay, so we got to end the program. Never mind. Right? So they, they stopped the bounty. Right? And they said, we're not going to pay for these things anymore. And all these snake breeders are like, well, what do we do with these snakes? Ugh. And they just let them go. Now the snake problem was twice as worse as before. Right? And so this is the cobra effect. And now what I think about when Japan makes this suggestion, hey, we're going to provide child care for you so you can go out there and have children and maintain your standard of living. Well, what's going to happen is, is that those people are going to be like, oh, great. We used to have to pay. Right, we it, we had to either cut our hours at work in order to provide our own child care, or we had to pay for child care, work extra hours to pay for that. This is going to totally relieve that pressure of having to come up with either the money for it or cutting our hours in order to provide the child care for ourselves. You're going to do it for us. Now we get to maintain our standard of living, or increase it. But it doesn't lower the standard of living and it doesn't provide them with an environment that encourages them to maintain that standard of living. Right? Because what happens here is that if that standard of living is maintained for indefinitely, like, you know, you just don't know if it's ever going to increase again. Well, at some point in there, you're going to find that there's going to be a time that you think that you're going to be able to raise children and maintain that standard of living. Right? But if you think that you can increase your standard of living, then you're going to be able to raise kids and feel that you're going to be comfortable knowing that you're going to be able to raise those kids into a higher standard of living than yourself. But if you provide them with a higher standard of living, then you increase your standard of living. It doesn't give you the ability to believe that you are going to give your kids an environment that is going to have a higher standard of living. It's just you raising your standard of living and everybody who doesn't have kids now pays more for their standard of living, discourages them from trying to have kids. You see what happens there? So by alleviating the pressure of having kids, the people themselves will raise their standard of living. The standard of the cost of the living will increase. The people who don't have kids will have to pay more for their standard of living, discouraging them from having kids. The ultimate way of increasing the population is to create an environment that is as depleted as possible for the people to believe that they will not suffer any more than this. That's the environment that you need to hear in order for there to be population growth. I'm not looking for it. I don't want to see the population growth because what it means is mass poverty for everybody. Right? Look at the places that have population growth. Right? None of them are Western societies with high standard of living. Right? They're not. They're all like very difficult poverty-stricken areas with mass separation between the rich and the poor. And that's not what I'm looking forward to. That's not an environment that I want my kids to be raised in, but that's what we're headed towards. And it's quite unfortunate. So if you are hearing a nation saying that there is a crisis situation with the population growth and that they need to do something about it, the only way to really get the people to do it themselves is to put them in an environment of mass depletion. Give them that environment for a significant amount of time until they become content living poorly and then you will find that those people who are content living poorly will have more children and bigger populations give them a high standard of living and they will deplete the population right. i think i said all that all right I don't know, I might have misspoke a couple of times, but you guys get it, right? <laughs> All right. Uneducated economist, you all let me know.